Help support AMTV by becoming a patron, an AMTV staff member, and following us over on Twitter. Hi there guys, it's Adam Martin here. And welcome back to another video. Now, I was in the midst of preparing the next documentary for this channel, another journey through television, colour television of a certain country. In fact, nearly 2,000 of you voted in the poll I put on my community tab, which wasn't a vote to see which country. It was just me saying, which do you think I'm working on? That will be coming soon. However, as I've been working on that, I saw this bit of news, what we're going to talk about today. And uh, I saw it from the BBC themselves on their media centre. And it says the UK's leading public service broadcasters are set to evolve free TV for the streaming age. Now, this immediately caught my attention, as indeed it caught the attention of many of you guys and many people in general out there. Because the, the idea of free TV here in the UK or the most publicly accessible TV has been talked about quite a lot in recent years, particularly in the age of streaming, the way television's going. We've covered it on this channel once or twice, but I wanted to go through this and let's see what exactly they're talking about. So it says Britain's biggest broadcasters announced today, which was on the 18th of September, just so you know. They announced today that their latest collaboration, the development of a new free TV service that will deliver live TV over broadband, so over the internet. For the first time for free, British viewers will be able to easily browse and watch live TV channels together with on-demand content streamed straight to their smart TV via the internet. It's an evolution that puts the distribution of free TV at the center of the streaming age. The new service will provide millions of broadband-only homes with easy access to a single consistent experience for live free TV over IP. Viewers will be able to uh, seamlessly browse channels through a modern and intuitive program guide and use innovative functionality designed to make it easier to find and explore new shows directly from live TV. So this is uh, supporting those who, as they say, they are IP-only homes or broadband-only homes, if you like, so homes that are, that are consuming television content exclusively over the internet. The age of free view is now well and truly on its way out, it seems. You know, the need for set-top boxes and all this sort of stuff will go in fully it seems, headfirst into an internet-based service. It's set for launch in 2024, and this new service, which is going to be called Freely, will be built into the next generation of smart TVs and feature a lineup of public service broadcaster content and other free-to-air channels. It will replicate the terrestrial TV experience, building on the heritage and popularity of the Freeview TV platform, which is currently used in 16 million homes. So, you know, Freeview is still used a lot, and I mean, if the population of the UK is... What is it? I mean, it's uh, almost 70 million or we're around that. That's a, that's a fair chunk of the population still. Just under, what would that be? Just under a fifth, something like that. I'm doing quick maths in my head, but 60 million homes still use Freeview. I mean, here in, here in our house, we're still a Freeview user from time to time. So I can see why they're, they're taking their time with this. They're not saying it's going to absolutely replace Freeview. At least that's the impression I'm getting at the minute. And the name, Freely, what an interest. I mean, obviously, they're, they're evolving that from Freeview. I guess it makes sense to keep the phrase free in there because that is the whole ethos of this. This is a hub for free-to-air channels for free TV, if you like. So the concept of a free-to-air television or radio program are broadcast to everyone and can be watched for free. So naturally, in an age where, you know, there's a lot of streaming sites which require subscriptions, which require money to sign up to, to consume their content, it kind of makes sense that they're emphasizing the word free in this new service here. As viewers increasingly consume content online, this next phase of free TV is about the distribution and availability of the PSBs, the public service broadcasters, live channels for a streaming age. It will help ensure the availability of PSB services into the future and complement the new provisions for an on-demand and streaming prominence set out in the draft media bill. So we've talked several times before about how all these broadcasters are going, you know, it's all about digital first. It's about let's get a, a digital foothold. They've done this in various ways, whether that's with their um, their streaming hubs, like for example, you know, BBC iPlayer, ITVX, whatnot, uh, the distribution of programming, the fact that children's content is largely going to be online only soon. I mean, CITV has already done that. They've amalgamated into ITVX Kids. CBBC is going that route as well in a couple of years' time. Freely is being developed by Everyone TV, the organisation which runs Free TV in the UK and is jointly owned by the BBC, ITV, Channel 4 
and Channel 5. So just a bit about Everyone TV itself. It's responsible for the day-to-day -day running of the UK's free-to-view TV platforms, Freeview and Freesat, as well as leading free TV's evolution for a streaming age. It was formerly known as Digital UK. The organisation is a joint venture, which is owned and supported by the UK's leading public service broadcasters, namely the BBC, ITV, Channel 4 and Channel 5. And having merged with Freesat in 2021 and with the UK's two free-to-view TV services now under the leadership of one organisation, Digital UK updated its name in January this year to Everyone TV to better reflect its mission to champion free TV for all. And I think it's really great that in this modern day and age that the terrestrial broadcasters, the leading ones here in this country, do come together on things like this. I know they sort of all did this at the start of the millennium with the advent of Freeview, and I'm glad that partnership has continued because you would have thought, you know, decades ago in like the 70s, 80s, the thought of, you know, the BBC, ITV, all of them working together on something like this might have seemed like a pipe dream. But of course, that was in an age pre-satellite, pre-digital, pre-any of that. But now with increased competition, some would say it makes sense that they all band together. It's why the BBC and ITV banded together for BritBox and all that sort of stuff. Jonathan Thompson, who's the chief executive for Everyone TV, said, We're delighted to be working with the public service broadcasters on the next phase of Free TV's evolution. This new development is a reflection of the fact that a growing number of UK viewers are watching content online, but still want easy access to the shared experience of live TV. Our aim is to ensure that all viewers have access to a free, aggregated live TV experience that champions British content and is delivered in a way that suits audience needs and preferences. Every one of us should be able to share in the best of British ideas and creativity on TV. So again, this idea, this ethos that everyone should be able to experience this is a valiant one. I'm absolutely behind that, but it comes back to a recurring issue that I've mentioned a few times in past videos, and it might sound like I'm a broken record, but I think it's absolutely true that not every household in the UK as of yet, as of late 2023, is just not capable of handling TV of any kind over a broadband connection. You know, areas, say, like, in, in big cities, in, in metropolis hubs, and in some rural communities as well, but not every household is smart TV ready. It's not ready to rely solely on an internet connection. I know friends who live in either certain areas of the country that haven't been yet serviced with a good broadband connection, or they're not able to afford a good broadband connection to be able to stream television or anything in the, say, the premium quality that it's offered him. I think it gets overlooked sometimes. You know, a lot of people can afford an internet connection or an, a route to the internet. I'm not disputing that necessarily. However, you've got to think, to get the best speeds, you know, you want to stream things at 1080p, HD, 4K, whatever, you're going to be paying more probably for the package of Wi-Fi or internet that allows you to do that. And for those who aren't able to afford that top tier or those higher price packages, they're gonna, their streaming is going to be dramatically impacted. I mean, I can't imagine, you know, the viewing experience, say, you've got a big TV in your house, right? You're trying to watch the latest drama from the BBC or ITV that was filmed in, you know, filmed in 4K. And, and you know, you, oh, you want to see it in 1080p at the very least. You want to see it in HD. But if you don't have the top streaming package, if your speeds are slow, if other people in the house, say your kids, other people are using the internet on their phones, their tablets, their laptops, whatever, then you're probably going to be watching that drama in less than 1080p, 720 if you're lucky, maybe down to 480, who knows. So I, I get why they're doing this, but I, I hope it elaborates a bit further on as well. But I just hope this doesn't mean that F uh, Freeview itself, as it stands, is getting completely erased at the minute. I know it's on its way out. I know it's gradually you know, on the decline, but I think to erase it immediately at the minute would be a massive misstep. Tim Davey, who's the Director General of the BBC, said, ensuring the universality of public service television is sustained into the future is of paramount importance to the UK and all its public service broadcasters. We are delighted to be deepening our collaboration in helping viewers access our content, ensuring that in a digital age, we deliver value for all audiences and that no one is left behind. Uh, again, you know, not, uh, a very, a true statement there but you know one thing people say with the beeb in particular obviously at the minute the license fee still exists that's around it's around 157 something like that a year so you know when you split that down that's roughly what was it 12 or 13 pounds i know we've done that before so when you're saying it's free tv some people argue well is the bbc really free well you are paying a license fee to legally access their content so some would say it's not free the information can be consumed easily once that's done and i think this is going to tie into what's going to happen in a few years because you know the royal charter which uh, the bbc license fee stems from that expires in 2027 that's only four years away and there's a lot of contention at the minute as to 
what's going to happen with it. You know, is the license fee going to stick around? Some feel it's far too antiquated. Are we going to get some new model in? Is it going to be subscription based? Who knows? You know, the BBC has to make its money somewhere. It has to do without, you know, they don't want to pull ads. They're, they're very much a public service broadcaster in that sense. So I don't know, maybe this move to Freely is going to tie in eventually with the whole license fee debacle. But it's nice to see that the BBC are still continuing that collaboration. They're all for it. Dame Carolyn McCall, who's the CEO of ITV, said, As more and more UK households use internet-connected TVs, it's critical that the public service broadcaster channels remain available and easy for them to find. This new collaboration enables the UK public to continue to get all of their favourite British TV channels for free, just as Freeview did at the advent of digital TV. Alongside the important reforms set out in the draft media bill, it will help PSBs to continue to thrive for years to come. And really, I think that echoes what all of these main broadcasters want. They want to thrive in the years to come. They want to survive first and foremost. And I think, you know, with Freeview, they always got that sort of prominence in the schedules. They were always like the first five broadcasters that you'd see on there. And I think they'd be hoping that if they're pushing to move to smart TV and internet base, that they'd want that same sort of, I guess that same sort of treatment, you know, to be e easily found. You, you know, you've got to be on the front page, ideally, I think is what is implied there. Alex Mahon, who's the CEO of Channel 4, said that streaming TV is increasingly the new normal for audiences, particularly young viewers. So it has never been more important for trusted PSB content to be readily available to everyone for free. We look forward to working closely with our PSB partners so that when the media bill's prominence provisions become law, the technology to make Britain's favourite TV shows easy to find will already be in place. So the media bill or the draft media bill, if you like, there's there's a, there's a lot of talk around that. Maybe we'll talk about that in a separate video. Maybe we'll talk about this a bit later. But that seems to have a lot of influence as to how this is going to work going forward. And then finally, Maria Kiriakou, hopefully I'm saying that right, apologies if I'm not, who's the president of Broadcasting Studios International Markets at Paramount, who owns Channel 5, says, We know that British audiences continue to have a strong appetite for the high quality, relevant and impartial content provided by our UK public service broadcasters, such as Channel 5. This new collaboration across the PSBs will ensure that, as these viewers continue to shift to IP-enabled televisions, they continue to have an easy way to access the channels and content they know and love. So again, all of the heads of these various broadcasters are unanimous in saying they want PSB content to be readily available on IP-ready televisions, on smart TVs, you know, internet-based televisions. They want that front and center. They want it easily accessible in a world where people have infinite amounts of choice, not just from uh, traditional TV channels, but, you know, also the streamers, namely. At the bottom of this article, there's a notes for editors thing here. So just a few facts. It says live TV delivers around half of all viewing in the UK. And the source of that is the bar viewing data. They're the main source in this country of like collating viewer data, how many people are roughly watching and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, the fact that half of TV is still being watched live in this country I'd say the appetite for television in general is still very much there. Yes, I know some people do the old factors, point to an older population who uh, are more used to traditional TV. But, you know, at this point, if half of all TV is live, that's I, that's more than I thought it was. Let's put it that way. It says 15%, which is around 4 million of UK TV homes, are currently IP only. So it's clear that number in particular is growing, that, you know, the amount of TVs in the UK that are solely ip base they are broadband only homes they don't have any free view boxes they're not using a traditional digital television setup it's all internet based and i think that number will go up you know that number will continue to rise as time goes on but you know 15 percent relatively that's still a very small amount as of yet so it draws into my point earlier we'll double back on that in just a second it says the tv guide remains the most common navigation tool for all uk audiences that's as of spring 2023 i mean yeah that makes sense we're all used to a tv guide and they keep saying it's going to be like this new and innovative way of like navigating content on freely i'm you know how much more innovative can you get from the tv guide i'm not too sure but i mean we'll find out it says currently in draft form, the media bill aims to modernize broadcasting legislation and introduce wide ranging reforms to the regulatory environment for public service broadcasters and video on demand services. That includes proposals to update the prominence regime for PSB services for a digital world. I do think introducing this media bill, which is going to absolutely modernize broadcasting legislation, 
is a good idea. You know, we should always keep moving with the times. But I'll be very interested when that actually gets published. It's in draft form at the minute. When that actually gets published, I'll be very interested to see what... Um, what major things it throws up in the air. It says the broadcaster's IP channels are also available via dedicated linear TV subscription services such as Skystream and Virgin Stream, as well as within broadcaster's uh, video on demand apps like BBC iPlayer and ITVX. I think that will continue for a while. I think Freeview, whilst it is on its way out as a whole, I think will continue for a little while. As it said, 15% of homes are smart TV only. Four million's a lot of people. But that is still a very small number when compared to the amount of homes that have TVs in the UK as a whole. I think before Freeview really starts getting that push to be phased out, that number really, I mean, it, it ideally needs to be around, but I'd argue, between like the 90-95% mark. Ideally, it should be 100%, right? They should wait till everyone's upgraded or, you know, nearly everyone. But we know that's probably not going to happen. So ideally, it should be between 90-95%, I think, of all homes that become broadband only before you really make that move to stop servicing Freeview. But until that point, I think you do need to keep it going because that's still tens of millions that, you know, that implies. They might have smart TV as well. You know, that figure saying it, they are IP only broadband only homes there might be some homes that straddle both that have a free view box say in one room and a smart tv in the other like that's entirely possible we can't rule that out but as long as that you know without that way of saying they're ip only i think Freeview still has a place for now will it last till the end of the decade i don't think so but only time will tell on that one to round off, and there's a great little segment from ITV News just covering this announcement about Freely. You know, whilst the, the aim is valiant, yeah, they want to have all the public service broadcasters and hopefully a lot of the other free-to-air channels as well, but they haven't yet confirmed that. They want all of that content easily accessible from one place on a smart TV for free. However, as the news article from ITV quite rightly points out, having an internet connection is is anything but free you know you have to pay for it and this just draws back into my point internet connections are expensive depending on the package you go for some areas in the uk do not have good high speed internet that is just a fact you know and I, i've had comments before saying oh that you know well they just need to pay for a better package it's in those instances it's not just a case of paying for a better package the infrastructure the high speed broadband infrastructure is not good and it needs to improve and it does confirm in the ITV news segment that Freeview is going to continue to remain on air, which I think is absolutely right with, you know, when 16 million homes are using Freeview compared to the 4 million that are just smart TV or internet only, it's a no brainer that it continues to run. But it seems ITV share my thoughts in that from 2030 onwards, the future of terrestrial TV, where you have an aerial to receive your content and all that sort of stuff, that remains uncertain. I do definitely think by 2030, you, we will hopefully reach a point where, say, all of the UK is covered by good quality high speed internet, you know, that's reliable and that smart TVs have come down in price. Also a factor that I, I think was briefly touched on just to elaborate, they're saying Freely is going to be built in to smart TVs going forward, which I think, you know, is an excellent idea. Why not build it in? Maybe it's part of this media bill. You know, if the public service broadcasters are saying we need prominence, you know, we need to be front and center. We need to be easily accessible for audiences to access and enjoy. Then, yeah, why not build it into the smart TVs? I think like with any new launch, there's going to be some teething problems in, in some form or another. And, you know, it's not like, as, as they said, it's not like there's not a way to watch content online. It's just via the individual apps. You know, you want iPlayer for the BBC, ITVX for ITV and so on. But the idea of like an app or a service on your TV that collates all those free to air channels together to watch for free, provided you've bought your internet connection and uh, the like well potentially the license fee regard who knows what's happening there so is it completely free no just inherently itself it's going for an internet based model that inherently is not free but i think having your main public service broadcaster channels in one hub an accessible hub an easy to use hub that people are going to use a lot for live television as it said more than 50 percent of people still do that i think that ultimately is a good idea 
I think Freely will gradually catch on. I think as long as Freeview still exists, the, well, the now legacy one, if you want to call it that, I think that will dwindle really slowly because, you know, it relies on people uptaking smart TVs. There's currently a squeeze on people's cost on what they can afford. TVs are quite the luxury. If you've already got a TV in your house, as long as it's not broken or damaged, some people think, well, why on earth would I upgrade? It's an unnecessary expense at this point in time. So Freely, I think, will, you know, it'll grow. It'll catch on. But I think Freeview has a few more years left in it at the very least. But that's all for this video. I just wanted to talk about the announcement of Freely, what it means for the TV landscape going forward, and some of the potential pros and cons as well. Let me know down in the comments your thoughts on Freely. Do you think this is a good idea for the public service broadcasters to take? Do you think this is the right direction? Do you think it's a bit flawed? Do you think they should do something else? Let me know all your thoughts down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like on it and do subscribe as well. We'd love to have you aboard with us. We're trying to reach 35,000 subscribers before the end of the year, and I know with your help, we can definitely get there. In the meantime, I've been Adam Martin from AMTV. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Thank you to our patrons for helping to support the show, and a special thank you to Macra, Ben Freeman, Ethan Carberry Holt, Bruce Danton, Globe of Reviews, Derek Chambers, Sean Nock, Dord Khan, Debose Cross, Liam Domain, Carl KR, and AJ Mack 200017, our AMTV staff members.